Good morning, everyone. Fatima, Deepak, good morning to both of you. Am I audible? Yeah. Fatima, am I audible to you? Cool. So let me start with the screen share. Okay, so guys, continuing from where we had concluded yesterday, we are studying very important financial mathematics where we studied what is time value of money, how is time value of money arrived at, how is it used for discounting, compounding, etc. How is it used for decision making? We also studied a couple of formulas. So if you remember, the formulas which I had written down, as you can see on your screen, these are the formulas for PV, FE. Now, guys, what are we going to learn today is a continuation. You can call it part two of financial mathematics, where we are going to learn about tables. Okay. So there are certain tables which are called as number one. We have PV tables. And number two, we have something called annuity. So annuity is something which we are going to learn today for the first time. Okay, and we have tables for that as well. Okay, now we have studied how to find the present value of individual cash flows, isn't it? In, in our yesterday's session, I demonstrated to you a few cash flows starting from T1. We also saw what is T0, T1, T2. Okay. So please watch those videos again to have a, a good recap, a sound understanding of the fundamentals. So what is T1? T1 is end of the first period or first year. T2 is the end of the second year and the beginning of the third year and so on. So if we have cash flows at T1, T2, T3, T4, T5, we have these cash flows. We can simply apply a rate of discounting, which is the cost of capital. Here it is 10%. So the formula which we used was FV, that is the cash flow. FV is nothing but the future cash flow. We are sitting right now at T0, right? So for, for us, when we are sitting at T0, anything happening, any cash flow received at T1 would be the future value of the cash flow. T2, 1200, future value of the cash flow. So each of these future values have been discounted. The process is called as discounting. Each of these have been discounted by using this formula number two. Now, what is this one plus R to the power minus N? Now let's try to figure out what that number could be as a standalone number, okay? Yesterday, what did we do? We simply multiplied thousand with one plus R to the minus N, okay? And we directly got the final answer, right? We got the final answer, 909. But what is the standalone answer? What is the standalone value of one plus R to the minus N? So I'll write one plus R 10% to the power minus one. 0 0.90909, right? Similarly, for the second year, T2, I have one plus 10%, one plus R, to the power minus two, 0.82645. So essentially, we have multiplied these cash flows by these, these are called as PV factors. What are they called as? They are called as PV factors. This is called as PV factor. Similarly, for FV, one plus R to the power N, this is called as FV factor. We are not going to talk much on FV factors not much relevant to our syllabus, although you should know uh, what FV factor is, one plus R to the power N. But what we are more concerned about is the PV factor, which is one plus R to the power minus N, okay? So this PV factor can be calculated by 
applying the formula 1 plus r to the power minus n, 1 plus r to the power minus 2, 1 plus r to the power minus 3 and so on. So if you multiply 1600 by 0 0.75131, let's do it. 1600 times 0 0.75131, we should get 1202, which we calculated directly yesterday. Okay. So these are called as the PV factors. Now for finding a PV factor, you need two things. Just now you have observed what are those two things? You need the rate and you need N, the period, the number of years. Okay. So your n was 1, r was 10. So at n of 1 and r of 10%, the PV factor is 0 0.9090. Similarly, here for n of 2, n is 2, r is 10%, we get the PV factor of 0 0.82645 and so on. We also have, now today I'm going to introduce you to tables. Okay, these tables are there in your exam kit, your study text. So present value table, the title is PV table. So just cross check 10%. If you look, the columns are percentages and the rows are periods. That is N. So 10% one year, 0 0.909. Isn't it so? Then N is 2, rate is 10%, 0 0.826, rounded off to three digits. Then we have 0 0.751. So we can find the PV factor for the first, I guess, 20%. So far as tables are concerned, you have been given 20%. 20% and 15 years. So max 20%, max 15 years, you have a shortcut. You can simply access the tables and find the factors simply multiply that factor with the cash flow, you get the present value of that cash flow. Guys, are you with me? Are you all understanding this? Let me know in the chat. Yes, no. Cool. Okay. So this is how you use the tables. Okay. Now, in the exams, you have a choice. You can use tables. You can use formulas because tables will be provided to you in the exams as well. In the CB environment, you will have a sheet where you can find the formulas and the tables. But despite that, I would want you to also know how to apply the formula, which we have already studied, right? Which we have already, this is the formula. Because if the rate is more than 20% or if N is more than 15 years, then you are forced to use the formula. You don't have tables more than 20 years and more than 15%. So you should, at the end of the day, have a good knowledge of how to apply the formula as well. So guys, let's move on to the next very interesting topic, which is just a continuation of what we have learned. Now, one thing you noted yesterday, Okay, we all observed yesterday that the amount of cash flows, okay, this 7778 was the summation of the present values. Okay. I hope you remember. We, we calculated the present values of each of these cash flows and then we added it up. You got 7778. So this is called as the NPV, net present value of all your cash flows. Right? Now, if I have the same amount every year, okay, if I have now noticed this is, we are going to have some fun with maths now. Okay, this is very easy, very interesting. Yesterday we noticed that each year the cash flow is different. Okay, 1000, 1200, 1600, 2300, 5000. Okay, each year the cash flow is different. What if we have the same amount of cash flow every year. How do I find the present value of all these cash flows? Of course, using the same method. We are not going to change the method. It's very much going to be the same. Now, just to do a quick recap, what method did we use yesterday? Number one, 
we multiplied each of these cash flows with its respective PV factor, isn't it? If you, each of these cash flows, E42 multiplied by the PV factor, then each cash flow, E40, F42 multiplied by the PV factor, each cash flow, G42 multiplied by the PV factor. So what we have essentially done, how we have arrived at this 778 is cash flow, multiplied by the PV factor. Okay, if I just try to write it mathematically, I'll try my best not to make it look scary, but let us learn it. It should be sigma, okay, summation, cash flow times PVF, right? The total of, the summation of, all the cash flows time PVF will give you 778.46. Guys, do you agree with this? Let me know quickly in the chat. Have you understood what I've done? Where N is equal to 5. This is how you write it mathematically. Starting with T is equal to 1. It starts from 1, ends at 5. This is how you write it as a mathematical notation. Okay, so what we do is multiply each of these cash flows with the respective PV factor, do a summation and arrive at 777.8. Now, going back to school days, all of us have studied a subject called algebra. So A multiplied by B plus a multiplied by C plus A multiplied by D. How do I simplify this? A into B plus A into C plus A into D. The first thing I note is we have a common number, a common variable A in all these three expressions. Okay, A into B plus A into C plus A into D. So we have A as common. So how do I write it? I can write it as A bracket. I just take the common number out and I multiply it with B plus C plus D, right? This is a very important, very good Fatima. This is a very important, not A plus B plus C. Fatima, it should be B plus C plus D. Yeah, very good, correct. So it should be A times B plus C plus D. So just take the addition of these remaining numbers and multiply it with A, you get the answer. The same technique, exactly the same technique we are going to use with annuity. Why? Because in annuity, the cash flow amount is same. Let cash flow be A. So if I want to find the total, the summation of the present value of each cash flows. Now, what are the factors at 10%? You already know. Let me copy it down from the table. Okay, let me use the tables today. 0 0.909, 10% one year, 0 0.909. Then I have 0 0.826. Then I have 0 0.751. Then I have 0 0.683. And finally have 0 0.621. Now, how do I find the total of the present value of these cash flows? I simply have to take the total summation of, okay, look at this expression, summation of cash flow times PVF. So 1500 multiplied by 0 0.909 plus 1500 multiplied by 0 0.826 plus 1500 multiplied by 0 0.751 and so on. So what is the common factor here? It's just like saying A into B plus A into C. So these factors are B, C, D, E, and F. And A is 1500, right? All of you get it, getting it? Just let me know in the chat. Yes, yes, okay. So how do I do it? One way, the long cut is of course, multiply 1500, you know. Let's go with the long cut first so that you get a complete picture. Okay, just multiply the cash flow with the factor. I simply drag and paste, copy paste, you get the same. 
okay i have simply multiplied each cell with the each cash flow with the corresponding pv factor so here it will be is equal to sum bracket open and simply add all these so is equal to sum just a total of all these i get 5685 okay this is the long cut long version the short version by using this algebraic equation is simply i'll write it here is equal to 1500 times so i take a common outside times bracket open and then simply do a summation of all these numbers right all these pv factors what do you see it's exactly the same 5685 the long cut also gives me 5685 and using algebra very smartly i get the same answer guys are you have you understood this concept cool now we have tables for this as well like what did i do i simply calculated 1500 multiplied by the total of all these factors right so we have another table called as annuity table where we get the total of these numbers so if i just want a stand alone total of these numbers what it would be is equal to sum of all these numbers it will be 3.79 so basically what i have done is i have multiplied 1500 into 3.79 i get 5685 that is what i have done so 3.79 is called as annuity factor what is it called as annuity factor just like this 0 0.909 0 0.826 these are called as pv factors the summation of these pv factors is called as annuity factor so what i have to do henceforth if i give you a particular annuity amount what is the meaning of annuity amount annuity amount means same amount every year so if i give you the annuity amount and i tell you the annuity factor for that many years and at that particular rate like say for example this 3.79 is the annuity factor of 5 years and 10% 5 years 10% annuity factor is 3.79 so simply multiply the cash flow with the annuity factor you get your answer isn't it now you look at the table 3 uh, in in this book pv table so just below pv table we have something called annuity table okay so 10% 5 years what do you see do you see the same number the summation so 10% 5 years 3.791 and this 3.791 is nothing but the summation of these five numbers okay if you go to the pv table take a summation of 0.909.826.75 you just add these first five numbers you get the annuity factor in the annuity table so i'm just showing you the multiple ways of arriving at that same number 3.791 guys are you with me have you understood this so will you be able to tell me the present value of any annuity right now there is another way there is another way which uh, is rarely used to find the annuity factor but we will do it once today okay and that is the formula method so if you want to arrive at the annuity factor all by yourself in the sense without using this table and also not going through this grind of uh noting down the individual pv factors and then taking a summation we don't want to do all the all these things okay just jot down all the pv factors and then take the total you don't want to do that nor do you want to refer the table then you have one last way of doing it is applying a formula so just look at the formula 1 minus the numerator is 1 minus 1 plus r to the power minus n the whole divided by r 
If you do this, you will directly get the annuity factor at any rate, any year. Now let us experiment it. Let us, let us try to find it out for 10% five years. We already know the answer. It is 3.79 by both the methods, by the summation method. Okay, we tried to arrive it at the summation method and also the table. Okay, now we'll use the formula. So one minus one plus R to the power minus N. Let's try to do it in the Excel. So first of all, I'll open a bracket to separate the numerator from the denominator. So one minus, again, there is a bracket one plus R, okay, bracket closed to the power minus five, right? N is five here. That will close the bracket. This will be the numerator. So I'm separating the numerator from the denominator by using brackets divided by R. So what is R? 10%. So divided by 10%. Got it? 3.7907. So that is 3.791. So guys, did you understand all the three methods of arriving at the annuity factor? One, the summation, two, the table, and three, the formula. You are free to use any of these three in your exams because uh, you will be provided with this formula as well. In the table, you will be given this formula. You will be also given the PV table so that you can take a summation. And of course, you will be given the annuity table itself where you can directly go and pick up the annuity factor. Now, the only thing you have to remember, the only limitation is maximum 20 percentages and maximum 15 years. Maximum 20 percentages, maximum 15, 15 years. You can use a table. Okay. Beyond that, let us say the percentage is 25% for 20 years. 25%, 20 years. I would say you will have to use uh, the formula. Okay. Or you'll have to just take a summation individually. However, let me also tell you very clearly uh, you won't find such calculations in your exams more than 20 years, sorry, more than 20%, uh, more than 15 years. You won't find, okay? Yeah. But if you find it, okay, you should be able to handle it, right? Guys, I hope this discussion is being clear to you. We are trying to learn something very fundamental here in financial management. Not only in financial management, I believe you can use this in, in other subjects. I believe in strategic business reporting. For certain standards, you'll have to uh, you know, find the discounted present value like in IFRS 9, okay, IS 37, where we try to find the provisions. Okay. Then we have a couple of accounting standards, like a couple of IFRSs, where even in IAS 16, property, plant, and equipment, where we have to deal with uh, these tables, okay, the PV factors and the annuity factors. So I hope this is reasonably clear to all of you. Okay, now let me check just for my own satisfaction whether you guys have really understood it. So give me a quick answer. What would be the present value of an annuity? So I'll give you the annuity amount. Annuity amount is, I'll take some odd number, 453,670. So annuity amount is 453,670. And N rather is eight years. And the rate of return, your time value of money that you're looking for, let us say, is 12%. Okay. Now, I'll try to devise a question. Okay. What we discussed up to now was a concept. Now, we are going to use this concept in a practical life scenario. Where are we supposed to use this? Okay. Where are we supposed to use what we have learned? So, let me frame a question. Let us say you want... $453,670 or rupees, whatever. You want this money every year, at the end of every year for eight years. You want this money. You want this cash flow to come to you. For that, you'll have to invest something today, right? 
So how much should you invest today? What is that fund that you should invest today, which will give you 453, 670, the same amount every year for the next eight years. If your required rate of return, your cost of capital, your time value of money, no matter what you call, I'll call it the discount rate. So if your discount rate is 12%, N is eight years, and you want 453, 670 every year at the end of every year, how much should you invest at T0? I hope the answer, the question is clear. So please do it at your end and let me know the answer. I'll be waiting here for your answer. So please try at your end, use the spreadsheets, use the formulas. You can use, you can use the formula, you can use the table. And I want the answer. Okay, I have received one answer that is from Fatima. Okay, Deepak, how about you? Fatima, what method did you use? Did you use the table directly or did you use one minus one plus R to the power minus N divided by R formula or did you take the summation of the PV factors? The last, you know, summation of the PV factors doesn't make sense because if you have the table, then why not use it? So basically you have two choices, either use the annuity table, okay, or use the formula one minus one plus R to the power minus N, the whole divided by R, either use this formula or use the tables. So what did you use, Fatima? Yes, I will open, but can you tell me how did you arrive at that answer, Fatima? I will open the table. Sure, but how did you arrive? 183229. N, 8 years. And R, 12%. Okay, so let's use the formula first and then the easier way out. Of course, we know it's the table. So we'll look at the table at the end, but let us try to, you know, just play with the formula. What is the formula? We'll copy paste the formula here. Copy and paste. Okay. Of course it doesn't have a reference. So one plus twelve percent to the power minus eight the whole divided by R, okay? Right? One minus one plus R to the power minus N divided by F62. So this is the factor, 4.967. Is it the same factor that we receive or that, or, or we can see the same factor in the table. Let us check. Eight years, 12%. Go to the annuity table, 12%. Check the 12% column and eight years. So 12%, eight years, 4.96. Got it? We got the same factor. Now what you have to do is simply multiply the annuity amount. Okay, you have to multiply, not divide. You have to multiply the annuity amount with the annuity factor to get the present value. So it will be 22, 53, 669. This should be the answer, Fatima. 
How about Deepak? Okay, let me ask you guys, do you have this book with you? Do you have the books? Do you have FM books with you? Okay, never mind. We'll see what can be done. You don't have the books, right? Okay, I'll tell you what to do. After the session, we'll get in touch and let's see what can be done. Okay, anyways. Deepak, did you understand? You simply have to go to this table, look at 12%, look at eight years, pick up the factor, multiply it with the cash flow. That is one way to do it. Another way is to apply a formula which you can see on your screen right now, it is one minus one plus R to the power minus eight. In fact, this formula also will be provided to you in the exams. You don't have to mug it up. It's given right up there in the table itself. One minus one plus R to the power minus N. The only thing you should be concerned about is how to apply it in the spreadsheet by using the correct brackets. If you don't use correct brackets, if you don't give clear instructions to the spreadsheet, then it may simply return to you a wrong number. Okay. So you have to be careful about how you use the formula. Okay. So that is what you can see on your screen right now. One minus one plus F62 to the power minus eight, the whole divided by F62, which is, which is R, the rate of returns. Patimat got it very good. Deepak, I'm not able to hear from you. Are you there? Are you solving it? Are you finding it very difficult? Please do let me know if you are not understanding anything. We can discuss it again. Deepak, you want me to explain it again or, okay, you're still solving it. Please let me know if you need any help. Please don't hesitate in asking your queries or taking help from me. You don't have the formula or table to look on. Okay, but this is the formula. Okay, you can note down, right? You can quickly note it down. This is the formula. This is the formula and this is the table. One minus one plus R to the power minus N, the whole divided by R. You can write it somewhere or you can just copy it in your Excel sheet. One minus one plus R to the power minus N, the whole divided by R, okay? I hope you have noted it so that I can take you to the Excel spreadsheet now, Deepak. So once you note it down, let's apply. Let's apply it. Great. Just check what I have done. Just look at the referencing and do it at your end as well, Deepak. Just let me know once you are done. Can you explain what's annuity amount denoting here? Annuity amount. See, annuity amount is like, just to give you a metaphor, it's like an EMI. Same amount every year, fixed amount. So I want 453,670 in my pocket every year for the next eight years. So it's like this. If I try to do it the long cut way.
what we are essentially doing is this is what i am doing okay same amount every year and i am trying to find the present value of each of these cash flows at t0 that is what i am trying to do correct what happened fatima anything you want to ask okay so same amount 453670 every year let us say i want it or i i want to pay it whatever either it's a cash inflow or cash outflow if i have borrowed money so this would be my equated annual installment it's like an installment same amount every year and i'm trying to find the present value of each of these cash flows today so the present value has to be 22 2.253 million this is the present value of all these five cash flows so all these five five cash flows are equivalent to 2.253 million 22.53699 is 2.253 million okay Twenty two fifty three six six nine. Twenty two fifty three eight thirty two. Is that difference okay? Yes, Fatima. That difference is perfectly okay. It is because of some rounding off, mathematical rounding off to be ignored. Very good. It is to be ignored. So I hope Deepak, you have understood this. You don't have any more problem. Yeah, Deepak. Okay. Now one more. okay i want you to be really good at this because this is what we are going to apply in all the chapters especially investment appraisal cost of finance cost of capital valuations business valuations we are going to use a lot of these principles in those chapters so you should be really good at what we are doing right now okay so now let me ask you again now this time i'll try to make it more interesting okay a very very practical question okay let us say deepak wants to buy a car okay he wants to buy a car his salary is okay i can take it to any level now let's make deepak very happy today so his salary is dollars uh how much do you want 1 million 1000 1000 1 million dollars per annum guys i'm using dollars as the currency because that is what we are mostly going to use for our acc exams okay i'm not going to use indian currency qatar currency nothing okay we are going to use either dollars or sometimes we're going to use pounds gbp okay but the rules remain the same currency doesn't matter okay his salary is 1 million dollars per annum and he spends 50% of the salary to take care of his expenses and investments now what does that mean it simply means that 500000 dollars he spends for his household expenses for whatever xyz and also his investments he invests in stocks mutual funds bonds real estate whatever okay he invest his money and that would be around 50% of his salary which is to tell you that remaining 50% is available to whatever he wants to do right remaining 50% is available now surplus i'll let's call it as surplus even his investment needs have been taken care of as per his financial plan he doesn't want to invest these 50% he wants to keep and use it somewhere else so balance 50% he can do whatever he wants to but he is not going to invest it anywhere investment needs have already been taken care of okay the rate of interest that is time value of money is 10% he is ready to borrow funds for 7 years find out 
which car deepak should buy very interesting question isn't it when i'm saying find out which car deepak should buy i'm not asking you the brand of the car of course that we can decide but i'm asking how much money he can afford to spend on buying a car what should be the value of the car that is what i'm essentially asking you what should be the price of his car it should not be more than he can afford to nor it should be less than what he can afford okay he has to make a very sensible choice financially very sensible choice so what should be the value of that car then once you know the value then we can pick up the brand right so guys have you understood the question let me check did you all get this question yeah cool so now the stage is yours you have the knowledge you have the concepts with you i'll give you maybe 2 minutes try your best apply your mind and if you want me to show the factors please let me know wherever you need the tables i'll show you the tables or formula okay that you can get in uh, in uh, you know you can connect with me and ask me but rest of the question i believe you should apply your mind without my help of course at the end i'll tell you what to do but you start it off you see what it what can be done if you want any rates any numbers any statistic you get in touch with me i'll share the screen with you but i want you to take the initiative and solve it all of you ready just let me take your approvals are you ready for this fatimat and deepak yes it's very fun it's interesting and very practical okay we are going to use these concepts you know everywhere in all your chapters mostly all your chapters especially valuations investment appraisal okay we are going to use this okay guys so here your time starts please let me know in the chat if you need something if you need some data okay fatimat has given me the answer already the price of the car which deepak should buy would be worth 2434209 that is 2.43 yeah i'll also show you the table you want the annuity table right so i'll show you the annuity table here it is tell me the rate and percentage uh, tell me the rate and the years that you want to look at you want to look at 10% 7 years okay 10% 7 years is there right in front of you just check properly i will not point it out but it's available on the screen 10% 7 years
Deepak, I hope you also are trying. You're doing your level best. Do not be disappointed if you are not able to get correct answers. That's perfectly okay. But I want all of you to apply your mind. Start applying your minds. Should I should I go back, Fatima, to the question? Have you noted the number? It is uh, four point eight six eight, right? Ten percent, seven years. This is what you wanted. Four point eight six eight. Okay, Deepak also has given me answer. Very good. Very good. Okay, now let's try to decode this question. What exactly are we trying to do? First and the foremost, salary is 1 million. And he's anyways going to spend 50%. So that 50% will not be available for the car. Okay. So available balance will be 50%. And this will be available every year. We are not talking about his promotions, hike, salary hike. You know, we are not bringing growth rate into picture. We are keeping things simple. Let us believe his salary will be constant for the next seven years at least. Now, if five hundred thousand dollars are available every year, why not use it towards the EMI of the car? That's the whole idea. Deepak can spend $500,000 every year as EMI or EAI rather, equated annual installment. He can pay $500,000 for the next seven years because his own expenses, investments have, have been taken care of. So this $500,000, he can completely spend towards the installment of the car. So essentially, what we are doing is T0, T1, T2, T3, T4, T5, T6, T7. Seven years. We're talking about seven years. He can go and borrow funds from a bank and bank is ready to give him 100% loan. Okay, I'm not considering down payment and all that stuff. Okay, I'm again not bringing complexities into this. So let us say bank is ready to give him the entire money, entire car value as the loan. Whatever the price of the car is, entire money is entire amount is available as a loan and Deepak is ready to pay 500,000. Right. He's ready to pay 500,000 every year for seven years. The rate is 10%. N is seven years. So simply this is an annuity, isn't it? So, so this is very easy. So it will be 500,000 the annuity amount multiplied by the annuity factor. Now for this, you can directly go to the table 10%, seven years, 4.868. So 4.868. Very good. 24, 34,000. So he can purchase a car worth $2.434 million today that won't be a big burden for him because he can sustain this income for next seven years. He can pay 50% of it towards the car EMI. He has decided to do that. So financially, just considering the financial, uh, um, you know, analysis, the quantitative analysis, he can buy a car whose price is $2.434 million. Guys, I hope all of you have understood this, how I applied. So this is how you take sensible financial decisions using the time value of money. Okay, now one more. Now one more question. Deepak, I hope you also have understood it. Fatima has already written in the chat that yes she has got it she has understood it she is in sync with the concept now one more question to all of you guys this time fatima okay fatima i'm really sorry if i don't write your name properly but i hope this this is a correct spelling fatima f a t h i m a t h okay wants to 
wants to borrow okay again just for example say she wants to borrow i know fatima will never borrow money she already has a lot okay but let's say she wants to borrow uh now let us say she wants to borrow a million dollars or let us let me increase the stakes 500 5000 thousand she wants to borrow 5 million dollars from a bank okay fatima wants to borrow 5000 uh oh, sorry 5 million dollars from a bank the bank charges interest at let us say 14% per annum and total term of the loan will be uh, 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 five years. She wants a loan for five years. Calculate the installment which Fatima will have to pay every year towards the repayment of the loan. All right. So Fatima wants to borrow $5 million from a bank. The bank charges a rate of 14% per annum and the total term of the loan will be five years. So naturally every year Fatima will have to repay some amount, which is called as installment principal plus interest it will have both, right? It will have the main amount, the principal amount of the loan plus some interest, but that amount has to be equal every year. Remember, installments are equal every year, same amount every year, which means it could be an annual. So this time I'm giving you the present value, right? Unlike in the car example, I gave you the installment and asked you to calculate the present value. Now I'm giving you the present value and I'm asking you to calculate the installment. Just some simple basic mathematical adjustment multiplication divide you know just have to do some little changes so what would be the answer i hope you the question is clear to both of you i hope the question is clear right okay now we'll apply the annuity principles and i'll wait i'll give you two two minutes i think two minutes would be enough since you guys are now quite good at these concepts so you can tell me sooner what would be the installment amount if you need any if you need to look at the table let me know if you want to take a look at the table let me know so Fatima wants 14% five years. Okay, 14% five years. Annuity or PV factor? Which table do you want? Do you want annuity or do you want the PV factor? You have two tables, PV table and annuity table. Which table do you want? Which table do you want? Yes, Fatima, which table do you want? Of course, it should be, see, it will be an installment. Installment. Installment means annuity. Remember, installment is an annuity. What is annuity? Same amount every year. So when you have different amounts every year, you have to use the PV table. Different cash flows every year, use PV table. Same amounts every year, use annuity table. That easy. All right. So yes, I will need to show you the annuity table. What is the percentage? 14% five years, right? So 14%, here it is 14% five years, 3.433. So Deepak, you can also note it down. 14% five years is 3.433, all right? I hope you have noted it down, both of you, 3.433. That is the annuity factor. So now you can tell me the answer.
Okay. So Fatima has already given me the answer. Okay, Fatima. Deepak. Now, what are we supposed to do? If I want to find the present value, like in the car example, what did I do? I multiplied it, right? So the formula here is present value of annuity is equal to the annuity amount times the annuity factor. Isn't it so? This is what we did earlier, right? The annuity amount, that is this fixed amount, 500,000, multiplied by the annuity factor, which was uh, 4.868. So this time I have the annuity amount with me. I have the annuity amount with me. So 5 million is equal to annuity amount times 3.433. Uh, so it will, it will look like this. So present value of an annuity is already 5 million, 5,000 thousand is equal to annuity amount, which is nothing but the installment times 3.433. So what will be the annuity amount? Annuity amount will be equal to 5,000 thousand divided by 3.433. Guys, none of you have got the correct answer, I guess. Now Fatima has got it. 1456452. Oh, Deepak also has got it. No. Deepak has got a little, little, little different answer. Fatima has got it. She has already got it. Very good. Very good. Deepak, I think... Even you have got the correct answer, but there is some mathematical error that you are committing. Otherwise, conceptually, even your answer seems right. You're saying 1470588. So I just check the inputs again. It should be 5 million divided by 3.433, Deepak. Got it, Deepak? Waiting for your answer, correct answer. Okay, actually you have solved it up to one decimal place. Okay, so if I do 5,000 divided by 3.4. Oh, yes. So one very important tip for both of you, for all you guys. When it comes to factors, at least use three digits after the decimal. Ideally, we have to use four. Okay, ideally, but you can also use only three, but don't use only two and don't use only one unless the question prompts you to do that. Okay, if the question asks you to do only two digits after decimal, or if they have themselves given the factor in the question itself where they have used only two digits after the decimal, then go ahead. Otherwise, ideally, four digits after decimal or at best, you can use three digits after decimal. Got it? Deepak and Fatima, please note this. Please keep this in your mind during exams as well. Cool. So I hope you guys are learning something very important, very interesting and something new today. Okay. So slowly I can see that you are developing a sound base of the concepts. All right. Now, these are the concepts. These are not from a particular chapter, guys. Please understand. The reason I take the first two, three sessions focused on financial maths is because these concepts will be like, they would be like an undercurrent, okay, across your syllabus. We are going to use these concepts in multiple chapters, not only in FM, later on in AFM. So this is something you should never forget. This is the foundation. This is the base. You should never, ever forget these concepts. All right. Now, let us apply these things to some different uh, situations now. 
okay and these are the situations which we are going to use again maybe in investment appraisal or valuation or maybe later on in afm okay what is the situation let us say it's t0 or let me pick up copy paste it from here So T0 is right now, T1 end of the first year, T2 end of the second year. Similarly, we go on till T7 end of the seventh year. Now, I give you the annuity. Let me take 1000 as the annuity. Okay, I'll keep a very simple number, 1000, all right, 1000. And let me keep R, let me keep R, the rate of discounting as 12%. Okay. If I ask you to now listen to the question carefully, you have to apply the formula which we have just now used. Present value of an annuity. Use this formula to find the present value. But remember, what is unusual about this? What is unusual about this timeline? The unusual part is. We have nothing in the first three years. Nothing in the first three years. The first cash flow begins from T4. And then it remains constant till T7. So T4 to T7, it's a constant cash flow, 1000. And I'm asking you to find the present value of this constant cash flow at 12%. So tell me the present value. And you have the formula, right? You have already applied this formula in Deepak's example, Fatima's example, the car example and the borrowing example. You have already used this. So I'm asking you to now, you have been given the annuity. You have been given the annuity amount. I'm asking you to calculate the present value of this annuity. Rate is 12%. Please try and let me know. If you need any help from me, so far as tables are concerned, let me know. I'll take you to the tables. I hope the question is clear. Let me check that first. Patimat, Deepak, question is clear, I hope. Yeah, okay. So do your best and let me know the answer. Annuity amount 1000, rate 12%. Okay, so now I have received a request from Fatima for annuity, four years and seven years, okay, 12%, okay, four years, 12%, okay, here it is, 12%. So you can check for any year you want. All the years are available right in front of you. So 12% column, you can check any year that you want. You can check. I hope you have noted, Fatima. Can I go back to the question? Okay. Let me go back to the question. Deepak, do let me know if you need any number or any reference of the table.
Fatima, where is the answer? T1 to T3, no CF, and we have to find T0. Okay, interesting question. This is what I wanted you to check with me. Yes, Fatima, this is what I wanted you to ask me. This is what I wanted Deepak to ask me. Now, understand. All of you, both of you, pay attention. When I'm asking you to find present value of a cash flow, remember, by default, you will get the present value of those cash flows just one year before the first cash flow. This is by default setting. What do I mean by that? If I find the present value of these four cash flows, that present value will not be at T0. It will be just one year before the first cash flow. Now, so far, I used to start my cash flows from T1, right? I used to start my cash flows like this from T1. So naturally, by default, the present value of these four cash flows was at T0 by default. Because we know cash flows is always the present value of the cash flows is always one year or one period before the first cash flow. Isn't it? Guys, are you understanding? Is it making sense to you? So far, I was starting from T1. So the present value of all these cash flows, all these annuity amounts was just one year prior to it, that is T0. But right now, it's not the case. Right now, my first cash flow is at T4. So T3 becomes T0. T4 becomes T1, right? So naturally, I will, if I apply this formula, if I simply say annuity amount, what is the annuity amount? 1,000, okay? So 1,000, 12%, four years. Guys, this is four years, T4 to T7, four cash flows. So four years, 12%, four years, 12%. 3.037. So multiplied by 3.037. I get the answer 3037. Cash flow multiplied by 12% four years. I get 3.3037. Okay. But remember, I asked you the present value not at T3. I asked it at T0. My intention of asking you present value was not T3 because I'm sitting here at T0. So what you'll have to do, which we experimented yesterday also, multiple cash flows, you know, different at different points in time, I tried to ask you the present value and you were giving me the correct answers. So find the present value now of this 3037. Now I know this is 3037. The present value of all these T4 to T7 cash flows, the present value is 3037. I know that. Now again, discount it and find the present value at T0. This time, it will not be an annuity. It will be one single cash flow. So you'll have to use the PV table. So PV table, how many years back you'll have to go? One, two, three. So three years. Or if you don't want to use the table, you want to use the formula. So it will be future value. 3037 multiplied by 1 plus R. These are the things we have already done to the power minus 3. So the present value of these four cash flows at T0 is 2161. I'll, I'll write it over here. Okay. So this should be H86. Multiplied by 3.037. Okay. And the present value of this should be the future value times 1 plus r to the power minus 4. Sorry, minus 3, which will be 2161. 2161. Guys, are you all with me? So answer to this question, what is the present value of these four cash flows? 
1000 1000 1000 1000 what is the present value the present value is 2161.677 deepak fatima please let me know have you understood this if you understand this you should congratulate yourself you have achieved a good level of understanding of time value of money concepts if you have not understood please get in touch with me again please ask me please put your queries across and get it understood so if pv is 2161 then what's 3037 okay that's the that's the present value of these same four numbers but not at t0 at t3 it's the intermediate present value and then if you remember we had done this yesterday this one i gave you for 1500 right i gave you 1500 at t4 and asked you to calculate its present value at t3 at t2 and at t0 the same number the same cash flow you can find the present values at different points in time so if i try to find the present value of 1239 at t0 1239 is at t2 i will get 1024 if I try to find the present value of 1500 at T0, it will be 1024. This is what we have studied yesterday. So please remember that this 3037 is not a new cash flow. We have only four cash flows here 1000, T4 to T7. We have only these four cash flows. 3337 is simply the intermediate present value of these four cash flows. But this 3037 is at T3. I'm not interested in the T3 present value. So I'll again discount it at two ones uh, and bring it back to T0. Got it this time? Three thousand thirty-seven is not the cash flow at T3. It is the present value of these four cash flows. So now 2167, 2161 is the present value of this present value. Now. If you want to <clears throat> follow a long cut, I'll tell you what to do. Pay attention. Now, don't be obsessed with what you're doing. Pay attention. Deepak, Fatima, pay attention now. Find the present values, individual present values of each of these four cash flows at T0. That means discount this 1000 at T0, discount this 1000 at T0, and you know how to do it. That's the basic stuff. Okay. Now it's a basic stuff for you. Find the present value of this T4 1000 at T0. Then this T5 1000 at T0. Find the present values of each of these 1000 at T0 and do a total and let me know. The rate is 12%. Got the instructions? Deepak Fatima, did you understand what I've asked you to do? Yes. Okay. You can use this formula. Since these are individual cash flows, I'm trying to, I'm asking you to do. So use this formula. FV 1000. Okay. R 12%. N, N would be 4 minus 4 for T4 cash flow. It will be minus 5 for T5 cash flow, minus 6 for T6 cash flow, and so on. Can we all do it together? Chalo, we'll do it together. All right. Let's start with T4. What is the present value of this T4 1000 cash flow at T0? It would be simply 1000 multiplied by 1 plus 12% to the power minus 4, right? 635.5. Let me try. Okay. Let me lock you can lock the okay i'll not get into those you know the complex uh, excel stuff so i'll simply use the simple long cut so 1000 multiplied by 1 plus 12 percent to the power minus 5 then i get 1000 times 1 plus 12 percent to the power minus six. And finally, the last 1000 multiplied by one plus 12% to the power minus seven. I got 
the present values of each of these one thousand dollar cash flow, and these present values are at T zero. I hope you have understood. Now, just take a summation. What summation do you find? What summation do you expect? What would be the total? It would be exactly two one six one. So this is what I am trying to do. So what I did, I applied the annuity formula for these four one thousand dollars cash flows. I tried to first find the present value. Now the default present value using the annuity formula, using this formula, is always at T three one year before. That's the default. So I'll do again discount is three zero three seven as a regular cash flow. This is not an additional cash flow, guys. This is simply the present value of these four cash flows at T three because that is the default present value I always get on applying this formula. Then I again discount it. Bring it back by four years. Sorry, by three years, and I get two one six one. Is it clear now, guys? Deepak, Fatima, are you all? Are you both understanding this? Very good. Now, without my help. Now, this is the last one for today. Now, the last test. Okay, please do not let me down. Do it on your own. Now this time I'll not take so long a period. I'll start from T two. Forty five thousand. Okay, same amount every year, but starting from T two. Rate. Let me take fourteen percent. Okay, rate is fourteen percent. Find the present value at T zero. First by using the long cut. Then by using the annuity formula, this is the formula that I'm going to use. You can use this formula, or you can use the long cut like this, six thirty five individual cash flows present value. Use solve by using both, and let me know what will be the present value at T zero, not at T one, T zero. I'm waiting for your answers. If you want any help, any table to be shown, let me know. Okay, so Fatima wants table. Two years, fourteen percent. Two years, fourteen percent. Okay, note it down. Two years, fourteen percent. This is what you want, right? Fourteen percent, two years, one point six four seven. This is what you want, Fatima. Can I go back to the question, Fatima? Okay, back to the question. Rate is fourteen percent. Okay. Any answers? Any luck?
first of all please note that this is an annuity so simply multiply the annuity number annuity amount with the annuity factor so what is the annuity factor 14% four years 14% four years 1 2 3 4 four cash flows so 14% four years is 2.914. So 2.914, the present value, and this present value will be at T1, just one year before the first cash flow. So present value at T1 would be 45,000, right? 45,000 multiplied by 2.914. Oh, oh, 2.914. So present value of these four cash flows would be 131130. 131130. 131130. But that will be by default at T1. So now I will have to again discount this 131130 by one year. Fatima, you're still not trying to focus what we are doing here. Please focus, both of you. So once I get the present value at T1, I again discount it back and bring to T0. So the same, this multiplied by. Now, what is the one-year factor, PV factor? The simple PV factor at 14%. I go to the PV tables, although I can find it from annuity as well, but let me go to the PV table. 14% one year. 14% one year is 0.877. So multiplied by 0 0.877, 115. Very good. Deepak, Deepak has given me the correct answer. Perfect. So you guys have received 115026. I've got 115001. Both are correct. These are all simple minor differences because of round off. But 115,000 is the correct answer. Both of you got it. Did you both solve by using this method or did you use the long cut method by finding the PV factors individually? Okay, this method only. Very good, Deepak. Very good. So guys, I'll repeat again. Please remember this 131130 has no meaning in the sense it is not a separate cash flow. It is just an intermediate present value which I have to calculate because of this peculiar characteristic of PV. So 45,000 for four years from T2 to T5, from T2 to T5, I have four cash flows, same amount every year. The present value, if I try to find the present value of these four cash flows, which is an annuity, by using this formula, I will get the answer not at T0, but only for at, you know, only at one year before the first cash flow, it is T1. By default, I'll get the T1 present value, but I'm not interested in T1 present value. I'm interested in T0 present value. So because of that, I have to again discount it back to T0. So my final answer is 11500 or 026, whatever. And then you have to forget about this 131130. That has to be ignored now. That has no meaning. The ultimate answer, present value of 45,000 from T2 to T5 is 115001. Guys, did you all understand this? Did you all understand what we have discussed today? All right. We can also do one thing. What do you mean by that, Deepak? We can also do one thing, right? Didn't understand what you're trying to say. You can unmute and talk, Deepak. We can just multiply each annuity factor and each and by PV factor. You can, but that will be waste of time. Yes, you can do it, Deepak. Of course, you can do it, but I call it the long way, long method. But that keep that as a second choice. 
because it takes hell lot of time right so it is better you use shortcuts in exam because in exams we have limited time okay but great you should know both the methods now guys in the next session that is tomorrow i am going to discuss another very important and interesting concept and very much relevant for our exams and that is how do i find the present value of a perpetuity we have seen annuity now we are going to see perpetuity what is perpetuity can anyone guess what can be annuity you know what is annuity same amount every year what will be perpetuity can you guess from the name perpetuity okay fatima says with growth well that is another variant we'll see that when you know the cash flows grow every year that is another variant very good but i'm happy you touched that topic with growth but perpetuity is not about with growth perpetuity means constant amount so basically perpetuity will be a uh, annuity constant amount but throughout the life throughout your life indefinite period so far we have seen cash flows where the uh, you know there was a definite life right four years eight years seven years there was a definite life what about cash flows which are for indefinite life i am not saying infinite will not use the word infinite or uh, you know infinite we are going to use the word indefinite okay so the, a perpetuity would be a fixed amount of cash flow for indefinite period like say for example 1000 dollars every year for indefinite period so n is unknown n will be unknown so how to find the present value of such cash flows which is extremely easy it is much easier than annuity also okay so there is one simple formula that we are going to learn uh very very simple formula so we'll learn it tomorrow and after that fatima talks about growth okay what if your cash flows grow every year like $1000 right now but then $1000 growing at 5% every year now again we can bring all the variants annuity perpetuity $1000 growing every year at 5% for the next 4 years and after 4 years it is growing at perpetuity at the same rate okay we can bring lot of variants into that okay so that would be the last part uh, that we are going to deal with in our financial mathematics okay guys i hope this session was fruitful as well i hope you are understanding things i hope you are getting to learn new things you are developing new perspectives i'm sure i i know both of you are have already studied this subject you have already attempted this paper but i'm sure you are definitely learning something new cool okay then guys let's stop for today thank you so much okay deepak hasn't yeah of course deepak hasn't but the other two students okay they will be joining us soon they have attempt attempted fm paper fatima also has attempted i'm sure but deepak for deepak this is a, this is a very interesting phase okay because he is learning everything for the first time so great okay you will get uh, the best out of it so guys thank you so much i hope there are no more questions today can we stop okay <laughs> yes fatima you have attempted but you are almost empty now which is a good sign i believe it's a good sign it's better for me actually if you're empty because if you were full uh, i had to check whether you were full with wrong concepts <laughs> and then i have to rub the i have to clean the board again and rewrite it which is a challenge for the trainer so if you're a blank slate if you're a blank slate definitely good for me we can write something uh something on it now which is helpful okay deepak okay uh, fatima thank you so much see you tomorrow same time bye bye have a good day